you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Welcome everyone to our Lenten worship this February 24th. I invite you to open up your Bibles or to read along with me and ponder this uh, gospel lesson from Luke ch chapter 5. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him, and Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a, a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to Jesus' disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners, to repentance. Such an honor to launch this Lenten worship series, 40 Days of Comfort Food. I don't know about you, but I'm missing those meals that we share together on Wednesday night after worship and before worship, those uh, wonderful times of friendship and conversation it's, uh, it's exactly what we see happening in the Scriptures over and over. Uh, by the way, I hope you found our online cookbook and uh, have tried out some of those recipes. They make my mouth water. And I invite you to send a note to someone whose, whose recipe you gave a try and share in the, the experience of Christ in our homes, even when we can't be together. In this worship series, we're lifting up these many occasions where Jesus launched the kingdom of God and taught the principles by which his followers live while sharing meals with others. You can see just a, a list from the Gospel of Luke of the many stories where a meal was shared and Jesus taught, and a couple of where it's implied that they got together for friendship and refreshments and a meal. In our scripture today, Luke chapter 5, Jesus is recruiting his followers, his disciples. You might remember he traveled along the Sea of Galilee and called out to fishermen like Peter and Andrew and Philip, and, and they became his followers, as unlikely as people like that, those roughnecks, might have been for the idea of starting a church. And yet, uh, the most surprising recruit was yet to come there along the Sea of Galilee, a man named Levi. To the disciples, Levi was a collaborator. Think of the Vichy French during World War II who accepted perks from the Nazis in order to to betray their countrymen. Similarly, some Jewish people like Levi saw opportunity for themselves within the strictures of Roman rule and the occupation of the Holy Land by the Roman Empire. They were opportunists who took advantage of the occupation in a manner like Levi, who became a tax collector for the Romans. These collaborators were deeply resented hated by their fellow Hebrew people. I mean, picture Peter that day, scraping by, making a living as a fisherman, landing his boat on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, selling his fresh catch of fish, and then immediately having to turn to the tax collector's table so that the Romans and Levi could extract their pound of flesh. Tax collectors and sinners... That summary phrase spits out of the Bible and, and lumps them all together. A tax collector was the epitome of a sinner. But here we have an insight, a, a light bulb moment in 
to the nature and the purpose of Jesus. Jesus said it himself in uh, Luke chapter 19, I think verse 10. I've come to seek and save the lost. Check it out for yourself in the stories of Jesus' life. He, he did not have problems with sinners. Jesus didn't take issue with someone being a sinner. Jesus has problems with those who think that they are without sin. Those who are judgmental of others. Those who are too good to turn to their fellow humans and to God and, and seek reconciliation. Levi was hated. But all that changed the day that Jesus sat down to dinner with them and the rest of the disciples and the Pharisees and, and those from their sect, and the Bible says, they, they looked around the table of each other and what in the world are we all doing here in this place? What could possibly have brought people like us all together? And then it dawned on them it was all about Jesus. This guy really is a Savior. Verse 31 and 32 are the crux of Jesus' teaching opportunity made possible that day He shared a meal in celebration of Levi's new life. Right there in Levi's home, Jesus said, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. And I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. How about you and me in this Lent, this journey that we walk with Jesus, an opportunity for us to look honestly at our lives and how quick we may be to look down at others, even to judge others, to identify our differences, to surmise that we're better than to posture ourselves in such a way. Rather than being given, anointed, as we say on Ash Wednesday, with repentance and the forgiveness of sins and the mercy and kindness that God calls forth in our life and offers today, right now, to you and I, who have opportunity to turn away from a direction we may be going and to come to life in the light of Christ and then like Levi to celebrate. Jesus saw these celebrations of mealtime as a way to, to teach these principles of the kingdom. You know, tonight in our Facebook Live conversation, I'm going to... Um, interview or have conversation with a, a young man by the name of Johnny Austin. I, I got to tell you how I met Johnny. It was many years ago and All People's Church, that church at Atonement is still such a meaningful partner. God gave me the privilege to plant that church and one way that we met families was through our food pantry, that food pantry that we collect food for each week. And this is how it would work. Literally hundreds of families over the course of many years, I would be sitting there at the church in the kitchen. The phone would ring and, and someone would ask if there was food available. And one day I got a call from a woman named Diane and it was a typical phone call. Yes, we have food. I, I told her we're, we're honored to be able to serve you. And I uh, said, so there's two ways that you can get food through our pantry. We have a... a a time where families can sign up. We can take a, about 15 or 20 families that we just give you a bag and you start, turn up between this time on this day. But I said, you know, there's another way that you get food here and that is uh, if you have some extra time and we could invite you into this little group that we have called a, a Bible study and we could talk, get to know each other and, uh, and after about a 30-minute time together, you can go into our pantry yourself and instead of us giving you a bag, you can fill your bag with what you would, would want uh, and what you know your family would like. And uh, in that way, we think we're able to do and be what, what Jesus was trying to do and be, not only to share bread, 
but to share the bread of life. Before I hardly finished, Diane blurted out, that's what I want. That's what I want. You know, that little conversation was the beginning of no less than eight or ten families, her extended family and relatives. Diane was one of, I believe, 13 kids. And uh, all of them became part of our church at some point. There at Second and Clark, this church that had closed because it was no longer effectively open to people of that neighborhood that had changed, was now open not only to share bread, but to share the bread of life. And with Diane's extended family, we shared so many years of joys and, and challenges and heartbreaks and opportunities and, and baptisms and communion and weddings and laughter. Johnny, who I interviewed tonight in our Facebook Live conversation, is Diane's nephew. I'm just going to tell you how very proud her family is of that young man I met when he was eight years old. And I, with opportunities to open up our heart and our mind and to share and to live the principles of Jesus Christ, And when it's really a privilege and the opportunity with someone that we're able to take interest in and to uh, create a safe, open-hearted time for us to share each other's stories, it can happen over a cup of coffee or a meal that we share together. It's a time of transformation in our lives as we discover ourselves on a pathway and a journey, not alone in this world, but together with others. And most especially, walking with Christ. Transformation happens in those relationships and over those meals. It happened in the Bible. It happened for Levi. And how is it that we know that Levi's life was transformed? Well, Levi was his Hebrew name. The Bible in the New Testament was written in Greek. And Levi's Greek biblical name, his Christian name, is Matthew. And he wrote the first book of the New Testament. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it.
life. Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Obras de verdad con Iglesia Luterana, que es una bendición esta hermandad apoyando el desarrollo de la comunidad. Pues lindos techos. Let's worship God with our tithes and offerings. 